Oh, right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody? We've got Serral here in the semifinals up against Clem in the top left of the ESL EU regionals. And I am very excited because I have heard that, oh my God, he's doing it. He's doing it. Serral is doing the build. Uh, obviously, we did a video recently talking about how Eric was kind of doing this and having great success with the 15 hatch 15 pool. And I spoke to Serral about it a fair bit and he said he finds it really promising. Uh, especially against Protoss, you can block, you can stop your hatchery from getting blocked, or against Terran by going for a really fast hatchery. This is 12 seconds faster than a 16 uh, hatchery, guys. He's actually able to get out Zergling, sneak them past the Reaper, and do good damage. So he's already done an Extractor trick, built a 15 hatch, another Extractor trick, up to 15 supply, builds an Overlord, and then we're going to see a spawning pool on 15. This is going to allow you to get your two queens started super fast, which completely blocks the Reaper from doing damage. He has said one problem is he struggles to get the creep tumor down. He says, I mean, it seems cool to, to you know, oh, I've got earlier queen, I could put creep down. But what he was saying is, well, the problem is you can't defend the creep tumor because the Reaper's there. So it doesn't, you don't get that early creep advantage. But what I was kind of countering with is, well, I think you want to inject first with this build anyway. Drone up your two bases really hard. And then what you want to do is actually uh, drop the tumor with your second round. And you'll still get it down around the same time your tumor normally starts, even though it's with your second round of energy, because your queens are so early. And the Reaper normally delays your creep tumor by a little bit anyway. So we'll see how it goes. Clem is not scouting in game one because he's up against Serral. So he's like, I don't need to scout. My Reaper can just go scout. But check this out. Serral's going to build two queens. Normally queens don't start till about two minutes. It's a minute 48, two queens start. And these two Zerglings on the natural are going to run across the map, dodge the Reaper and go in and kill this SCV. I absolutely love it. Now, what's interesting is Serral is going for gas, but he's delayed the gas and he's only got two workers on because he's very aware of the fact that by doing this build, you are down two workers at the very start of the game. So this is really cool to see that he's saying, well, I don't want to, you know, I'm going to have to delay my third a little bit if I want to get the gas. And I do think that's acceptable. I would argue normally you don't want to go gas uh, unless you want to delay your third till about three minutes plus. So we'll see if he does the delay on the third. Uh, Serral obviously is still relatively new to this opening, but he does say it is very promising. And he did say he was practicing it a lot leading into the ESL Masters. So I'm really cool. I, I love that Serral was so open to trying this build out. Like I linked him a video, asked his thoughts on it. And I was like, not expecting that much of a response. Players are normally pretty dismissive, but it looks like he sees the potential and Look at that, man. Sees the second barracks in the factory. He knows this is a 2 on -one, 1 follow up. He's delayed the command center and delaying a bunch of mining time. And the Reaper has to come all the way home for this. And these two Zerglings, like, you don't even care about losing them. I mean, Clem's microing fantastically, by the way. Very good micro, but already being scouted. Serral is just droning like mad. And notice he doesn't have a third down. It's past three minutes, guys. So this is a beautiful play. Clem wants to go for the double drop in the near future. But guess what? No third base just yet. He goes out and takes it now. You might think, well, isn't that bad having a late third? Normally, players don't have their natural saturated till about 3.30. His is fully saturated at 3 minutes 20, and he's fully mining gas. Third base may be a little slow here, but this gives him also a lot of queens. He's already got creep connecting his bases. He's already got four queens out, and he's going to go lair and roachhorn, which is a great way to play this, because around this time, you often want to grab a second gas if you're playing roaches anyway. And those extra drones that he's building will have plenty of space to mine from. So I'm absolutely loving Serral's play. He also likes playing Mass Roach Ravager versus Clem because he feels that Clem is so good with his Marine Micro, he can always focus down Lings and Banes and then pick up into his Medivacs. But because Roaches are a bit tankier, yeah, occasionally Clem will get a Roach or a Ravager sniped off. But it's much easier to skirmish with those little drop harasses that he does and, uh, and deal with it. Now... He's going to go for second and third gas. Serral could turn this into a big timing attack as well, but uh, that would not be a bad way of doing it. He definitely needs to build roaches from about 4 minutes 30 onwards, knowing that there is indeed a double drop coming. But wait, wait, Clem's going for a hell that timing. Oh no, this is a disaster for Clem, guys. This is the worst possible strategy against someone going roaches. Hellbat Simmerine. I mean, maybe Serral's a bit too greedy and gets caught off guard. But that'd be very unlikely. I mean, Serral knows you've got two barracks. So like I said, about four minutes 30 is when you start building roaches because you know five minutes to 520 is when the double drop normally arrives. And we can see it. Marines, Medivac, Hellions are coming for that timing. So normally you'd build 10 to 12 roaches at this time, which is going to be a perfect set of units to begin the defense. It still is a lot of Marines. Serral's going to have to be careful. He's building a few extra overlords. Notice he's pulled all his overlords away so that nothing gets sniped by the Marines. And even that overlord was hiding up here. 
So Clem hasn't really got any pickoffs just yet. He's coming in now. Cyril's about to find out what's happening. Get out of there, Cyril. Okay, he's got eight roaches out, five more building. This is still a kind of scary attack. His roaches were off towards the third. Clem shoving it in with recklessness. Oh my god, Clem. If he gets all those drones, this could work out. This could actually work out. It was a surprising attack. Cyril's doing a good job of pulling back, and the Marines have triple or double stimmed already. His second stim's about to wear off in a few seconds, which means, of course, those Marines, if they stim one more time, they do. They're down to just 15 life, but they're getting the damage. Oh, Clem runs into a well-defended Cyril in terms of unit count, but he finds the damage anyway by just shoving in the roaches. We're all out at the third, and he just uses the movement speed advantage. 15 drones go down. Cyril's opening looked so promising, but he just didn't realize that this is what was happening, and Clem catching him out of position. Those roaches should have been in a central position. If they were, I think Cyril is fine here. As it is, he's still up in workers. And there's no third command set. He might be okay anyway. That's a crazy amount of damage to take. But a lot of Hellions went down. A lot of Marines went down as well. Units lost up isn't that bad. He's got Carapace on the way. Uh, and 1-1 one, one even. He's droning pretty hard. I'd say that's the big threat. Is that he doesn't know there's no third command center. But, well, now he does. Overseer flies in and sees everything. The third command center just started. But for all intensive purposes, it's just a big two base push that you've got to defend for now. Nice stim for Clem. We'll take out that Overseer. But Serral's going to take a dump on his third base location as well. No, he cancelled. Oh, he cancelled the creep. You know what's funny, guys? He figured if he drops creep, Clem might see it. So he says, let's not drop it until the command center comes over here and tries to land. And then we'll drop it at the last second. Just so there's less chance of him noticing the Overlord. Because right now, Clem didn't even notice the Overlord. Right? He doesn't. Otherwise, he would see the creep on the minimap. And he would immediately go there to clear it up. This is a really clever move by Serral. Just a tiny detail that very few players other than Serral would pay attention to. Serral's still on 66 workers right now. Three bases full, trying to secure a fourth here in the bottom left. When you play Roach Ravager, expanding in a straight line like this is the way to do it. That's uh, because you, you don't really have the ability to be as quick as Ling Bane to, to run back and forwards to deal with drops. That is an empty medevac, guys. So this was two empty medevacs he sent out. The Overlord does do a poo at the last second, but the command center was so late that it doesn't really matter. It goes down. Big Marine tank push coming, but Serral is on Mass Roach, and if he can buy 40 seconds for 1-1 to finish before he fights, he's going to crush this. Seven Overlords building at once. Serral wants to make sure he never gets supply blocked again. Uncharacteristically, two drones idle in that main base. An odd mistake for Serral to be making, unlike him. But, you know, man, I don't think Clem fully realizes just how big that army is, and he's going to try to deny the fourth, which I think is a good choice. If he could deny the fourth and get out, it's a, it's a good move for Clem. You just don't want to overcommit here. Good cancel on the fourth for Serral. Not the end of the world to lose that. He should just send a drone and take the base on the right side. He hasn't done that just yet. I'd like to see Roaches flanking. Serral's microing in a blob right now. He knows that Clem likes to shove his marine forwards in a ball. So he wants to keep his Roaches together so that he doesn't just get overwhelmed with his Clem. That's a really silly move. Clem needs to get out of here, man. Clem should not be on this side of the map anymore. So there's something Terran players do. Maru does it all the time as well, where they attack into Roach Ravager as if they have the scarier army when their army is clearly the weaker army right now. And he's doing it. Clem just attacking into a bad position. If he wins this fight, I will eat my shoe. Serral gets on top of the tanks. He drops Biles across to force the Marines to dodge. All the tanks go down. Great focus fire with the Marines. Don't get me wrong. He does some good micro. But uh, this is a little bit like watching um, 4GG, where, where he just attacks into a bad position. That's a very bad fight for Clem, all things considered. And the thing is, you've got to think about this on a basic strategy level. Zerg's on three base. You're now on three base. Zerg is losing the game. If you do that attack, you need to shove in and force the fight immediately. A minute had gone by with him denying the fourth of Serral massing up a bigger army than him. It's time to pull back and defend. So Clem there doing what so many Terrans have done over the last few years, and that is throwing an army away into a defensive Roach Ravager player. And the thing is, Roach Ravager doesn't scale into the late game. Marine Marauder Tank Medevac does. So Clem losing those units is a big issue. He's still going to try to hang on. He's not dead yet. He's got two tanks and he's on the high ground, which is very important to keep those tanks safe. But I think he's going to have to abandon this position. SCVs are being pulled off the line. It's worth losing your SCVs as long as you keep your bio alive. But that tank on the left isn't firing. The tank on the right isn't firing. I don't think Clem can stand and fight here outside a tank range. Surely not. The SCVs fighting. The oh, Medevac does go down to the bio. Serral. I don't know, actually. 
You know what? The SCV pool was really nice. Maybe that was an overcommitment for Serral. He's trying to swap back into link speed right now. Serral is trying to get more damage. Maybe Clem is just that good at picking his fights. His micro is so good. Maybe I underestimated it. Maybe he can attack into the defensive Roach Ravager into it, especially after those early worker kills he got. Roach Ravager landing files across the front lines. This is a very close supply, which is terrible for Serral. Serral needs to get out of here. He needs to get home, but the concussive shells is making it very hard to retreat. So if Serral keeps turning around to try to save his units on the retreat, that is very nasty. 2-2 two, two, tunneling claws are on the way for Serral. He's way down in supply, which is a disaster. That was, uh, I thought, an awkward position fighting away from the tanks, but apparently Serral was just a bit too clumped, and the SCVs did an amazing job of blocking. A lot of those SCVs got damaged, and only eight of them died. Equal workers is very good for Clem. On the other hand, 2-2 two, is about to finish. And that is going to allow Serral to go from a uh, relatively even upgrade situation where he's just been at a small advantage to a massive upgrade advantage. Um, yeah, he's been up one upgrade, plus one armor will finish, but so will his 2-2, which means he's going to tie up the upgrades and then uh, and then double the upgrades. So that's going to be fantastic for Serral's Roaches. He's going to go Infestation Pit. The fourth base has some drones on it, but that's mostly drones that got transferred out of the main as it ran out of resources. Now, as Burrow kicks in, Tunneling Claws definitely could have some potential. Clem's still only on single engineering bay. He's trying to swap into Widow Mines. So he saw Zerglings mixed in and he's like, oh, okay, I'm going to swap to Widow Mines to preempt the Ling Bane swap that I know you're going for since I've seen Zerglings mixed into your army. Roach is getting ready for Burrow and Tunneling Claws to finish. It's going to be an 11 Roach run by on the right side into the main and the natural. There is not a turret on the map. As long as he doesn't get spotted burrowing. Oh, if Clem moves forward, that'll be good. But look, he burrows immediately. And that's really good. Now, does Clem notice the dust? Serral wisely doesn't move those roaches yet. He should move them in now. Serral doesn't see this army till now. Okay, he sees it now. Serral sees this army now, but uh-oh, he's way out of position. He's going to lose that fifth base for sure. That's not the end of the world if these roaches get in and do some damage. Burrowed Zergling blocking Clem from taking his fourth base. Serral is up in supply, but a lot of it's Roach Ravager. It's not very good supply. He's trying to build Infestors and Ling Melee upgrades right now. Double Liberator coming in from the bottom left. The Queens take it out there. At the same time, Roaches try to run in. A turret did build. He built a turret. Very smart of Clem. If your opponent was on mass Roach Ravager, they often want to trade those out efficiently by using Tunneling Claws. Great plays. Liberator in the main still not dealt with by Serral. Looks like his queens are moving over to deal with it, but that's going to take a while. That Liberator being a big old nuisance. Clem's harassment, fantastic. He's now way up in economy. 74 workers versus 66. Fourth base is landed. And the Liberator gets a few more drones as well. Still no Spork Ruler building. Serral's trying to defend this just with queens, which is kind of crazy. Oh, Fungal. Fungal ambush. The Infestor's being spotted. The Infestor has been spotted. He should just kill that worker line with the Zerglings. Fungal! Oh my god, watch out, Clem. Clem's trying to spread backwards, but he's also trying to defend the base at the same time. Luckily, only three SCVs go down. Looks like the Liberator got a few more workers before it died. Big Fungal's land. The Biles unable to connect at the same time. There's one Fungal left. Another Fungal on the right flank could be huge. It ends up landing on some of those Marauders, but it looks like Serral has overcommitted. And you know what, guys? Clem here just showing some very solid play. Serral unable to find the mark despite opening 15, hatch 15 pool, having a good start to the game. That surprise Hellbat Stim marine timing, diving and getting 16 drones really seems to have thrown a spanner in the works. Serral's trying to hang on. He's trying to transition back into a proper game. 1-2 upgrades on the melee versus 2-1. Two, plus 2 armor's almost finished for Clem. And plus 2 melee just starting now for Serral. Serral's Hive is almost done, but he's only on 69 workers. He doesn't have a lot to work with right now. He needs to find an efficient battle, but he lost all of his Infestors before. And those Infestors were his one comeback tool. Fifth base gets sniped. That should be a game-winning move for Clem. A Roach Ravager army is just dead in the water. The Baneling transition needs a lot of money in order to be efficient. Serral does not have a lot of money. And uh, Clem has just got mass medevac. 13 medevacs, 41 marines, 12 marauders, 9 widow mines, 1 siege tank. Three Vipers are in the way. I mean, Serral's good at clawing his way back into games. It just feels like Clem is so far ahead of the curve that he could keep dropping him to death even. Widow Mine Drop will go down the left of the map. Overseer's coming into that main base right now. Chad Hammer Jr. up here on the high ground. She's got 15 kills. Looking all right. Ghost Academy plus two vehicle plating as well. Uh, Ghosts are on the way. Three, three upgrades. Couple Vipers. Marine Marauder Medivac. Uh... Started stepping backwards a little bit. A few of those units do get picked up and saved. Big Biomine spread on the right side coming in as well. Serral has a fight cut out for him, and it's the fight of his life. Big Widow Mine on the Zerglings, unable to disengage in time. There is not enough Bile to defend this side. There's only two Ravages. 
And oh man, Clem gets another denial on the fifth base. Zero's trying to hang on with Roach Ravager, but he just doesn't have the numbers. Roach Ravager doesn't do enough damage once the army gets this big. And Parasitic Bomb and the Metavax, I do like that move, but look how quick he is on the spready. Clem is a bloody gymnastics champion, I'll tell you that, man. Uh, could go... F oh, the Widow Mine! 17 kills on that Widow Mine. Two more Widow Mines! Uh, I think Sarah's shaking his head, tussling his hair. I can't see the camera, guys, but I'm pretty sure you can tell that Serral is, is tussling that hair. You guys know what he does when he's angry. He always has that same look on his face. He's shaking his head in frustration. He's looking extra, extra focused and angry because he knows that this was a pretty good start to the game. And when he lets lead slip away, that makes him very, very frustrated. It's not something he ever expects of himself. And he doesn't stand for it. He's going to be very motivated in this next game. Widowmine takes out a Viper. Man, there are so many Widowmines on this map. Great parasitic bomb there, but it looks like a snipe lands on one of those Vipers. And Clem is so quick on the spread. Fifth base is up. New command centers are trying to build as well. Clem never really got to mass orbital. It's amazing that Serral's supply is this close. I, I really feel like he's been dead in the water for so long, but he's actually keeping the supply surprisingly close. Clem shoves in, loses a few units. Nice Widowmine friendly fire by Serral. Gets the Zerglings to drag those Widowmines on the, the Metavax. The Metavax are starting to get very damaged. The supply is surprisingly close. Clem is going to lose. Oh no, the Ghosts barely slip out of there. Widowmine does get biled down, but a few Widowmine shots not bad as well. Snipes take out a couple of Roaches. Not the best units that Serral wants to keep alive. He's going Vipers and Infestors both right now. No Pathogen Gland, so it'll be a while till he has Fungal available. Kindness plating's on the way, plus three kindness plating, uh, plus three armor as well, sorry. The carapace upgrade will finish in a moment. More snipes going down. Yauchi, Yauchi, a Ravager gets popped. Baneling says, oh, the Widow Mines. Two Widow Mines just got dragged in to do massive friendly fire. Serral says, how do you like them Widow Mines, bitch? Clem says, uh, what the hell, man? I'm still going to beat you this game. You can, you can drag my Widow Mines and turn them on my own side. We've got to get an AI patch for those Widow Mines to change targets when they realize they're tracking into a group of friendlies. Something which, of course, uh, Mexk never prioritized when he was developing the Widow Mine. He was like, who cares, man? Life's, lives are cheap, dude. Making a new new AI patch? That's expensive. These these software devs, they charge a lot. Uh, Marines coming in from that right side. Roach Baneling Viper coming in from here. Parasitic bomb would kill that medevac, but it looks like it's just out of range, maybe. Liberator comes in from the bottom left again. Serral's economy getting harassed. Serral is hanging on like a bloody champ. Uh, it'll be so impressive. If he brings back this game, I will dump him the Grand Wizard of Awesome Comebacks. Actually, wait. Isn't Grand Wizard like the Ku Klux Klan title name? We should probably give that a better name. Uh, Epic Wizard Man. We'll call him the Epic Wizard Man if he makes this comeback. Speaking of fungal. Fungal burrow! Fungal burrow! Oh, the ghost got away. That's unfortunate. Nice parasitic bomb, though, with the fungal. Dude, if he, if he just got those ghosts as well, that would have been such a sick ambush. It was still good for him. But, uh, man, these widow mines still being annoying over here as well. Serral, he's trying to push in here, but, oh, so much widow mine by. I don't think this works. He's trying to catch him off and break him. But I don't think that's going to work. Surely not. Serral has to tap out. He knows he's done and dusted. He's too far behind in the economy. GG, well played. Alright guys, well, a cool opening in game one, but it looks like he's gone back to a 16 hatchery opening in game two. Serral says, enough of that silly business. To be fair, I think it was a very successful opening, but Team Liquid's Clem. Uh, definitely catching him off with the Marine Hellbat timing. That Marine Hellbat build is elegant. Especially when it's scouted, because it looks like a 2 on one You're thinking, oh, double medevac marine pressure, and then it's like, bam, Hellbats, you know. Um, so it's kind of a, a cool switch up off the same initial start as the 2 on one where you actually leave the factory and the reactor. You don't swap the starport onto it, and just, or you just build them one at a time, whichever way you prefer. But uh, hatch gas pool, still a solid opening. Hopefully, Serral does mix in that 15 hatch, 15 pool again, because I do think he was way ahead. It's just to think of it, imagine that timing comes in on this map. For a clam, it comes in from there, goes into the main. Serral's roaches were all sitting here. And they're slow roaches at that stage. You've got to have your roaches in a central position because they are a slow unit. <laughs> Otherwise, marines make you look really, really immobile because the roaches kind of waddle after them and say, please come back here and fight us. Oh no, that was a big problem, man. Despite that, I did think Serral was in a good spot after beating that, um, that push, but... Seems like, I think Clem just did a very good job of pulling the SCVs when he needed and keeping his tanks in very safe positions. And uh, Micro did his bio very well. And I think we just saw that even though the upgrades were a little ahead for Serral, um, he didn't have an overwhelming roach supply. It was a bit ahead in supply, but not as much as uh, I guess he needed. 
for that amount of buyer. The general rule is if you can't kill a buyer player when their tanks aren't even in range of the fight with your Mass Roach Ravager timing, you were already behind. And I think that comes back to the 16 drones that are, that went down earlier in that game. Uh, very well played by Clem. Even though he lost his tanks on his push as well, the first fight he did save most of his bio units, I guess, with the medevac. So might have actually been an all right fight. Clem, Clem's very good at like, you come in with a flank and he just stutter steps down one side of your flank, picks up and leaves. And you realize you killed two tanks, but you lost 20 roaches for it. So definitely something to be wary of. I think Sarah will go Ling Bane this game. He's got Ling Speed on the way, of course. Uh, oh, hello. This Reaper is being a real, real annoyance right now. Queen has to come back up to defend it. Creep put in an ultra conservative location and the Reaper finally leaves. Third command center comes up behind this, guys, and it is once again a factory and second barracks. So Clem is trying to just go straight into the bio stage of the game. This is Clem saying, I don't think Hellions are worth it versus Serral. Serral's too good at defending Hellions, but if I go straight to Marines, Widow Mines, uh, all that sort of stuff, I think I can just overwhelm it. I think it's a very smart way to play for Clem. I really want to see... Uh, oh, nice. Nice Ling Run by... Oh, Serral taking a leaf out of Dark's book. Dark, for those who don't know, is an absolute predator when he plays Clem. Always gets him with Ling Run buys every single game. Like, just different Ling Run by timings, and they always catch him off guard. And Serral says, yeah, it's only four Zerglings, but look, I get a full scout. I know he's going two barracks. Probably just a straight two on one. I doubt he tries that silly Hellbat timing again. And uh, I also got two SCVs, which is, of course, amazing for a couple Zerglings. This pulls the attention away from me. I can now spread my creep freely for a little bit catch up on that since the reaper was so annoying up to this stage and uh, kind of important to do that now interestingly he leaves this overlord out here normally and in that last game he pulled all the overlords to safety you can see this overlord's going to the dead space these overlords are kind of pulling back because you don't want to leave overlords sitting out there when it's hellions sure but if you know there's marines with medevacs coming you don't want to give them any freebies creep continuing to spread pretty frequently here one, two, three, four, five active tumors, not to mention the one in the main, which can spread around the edge of the main base once he gets to it. Important to do that just so you get a little bit of extra vision and the ability to respond to drops very quickly. Now, that's quite a quick lair, which tells us Serral wants to go fast baneling speed. You might be thinking, isn't it for overseers? No, not really, guys. He knows it's the third command center. He knows it's a bio build. He doesn't need overseers for scouting, and he knows there's no banshees with this. So he's like, oh yeah, no, I just, I want baneling speed. And that's why the baneling nest goes down soon after the lair. It builds... Uh, 14 seconds quicker. That way you time them out, finish at the same time, immediately start bailing speed and shut down that Terran aggression. Fourth base goes down at the five minute mark as well. I love Serral's build. Tanks are building behind this, uh, so it is not going to be the bio mine style. Oh, that overlord was misplaced for Serral. If he left it there, it could have slowed this push down ever so slightly. Nine queens are out. Tenth queen on the way. Serral's going to dance with this. Nice pullback on the queen that got target fired. That was some excellent micro by him, guys. Ooh, okay, very well done. Double Evo Chamber is on the way right now. We've got that fourth base as well. Extra gas goes down there. So if you can protect your fourth base first to two on one, you're feeling pretty good. But this is a three CC two on one. So remember, this this does keep growing the economy at a pretty drastic rate. Extra tanks building. Third barracks is on the way only now. Notice the 4th and 5th barracks is super late with this build, but you've got so many marines just off your first two barracks that it doesn't matter. They only started about 6 minutes. Overseer comes in. Marines will shut it down, but pretty good scouting knowledge, I think, for Serral. He's 100% sure this is just a standard follow-up, and most importantly, he knows that it's siege tanks being built. Uh, Serral is going to come down with his queens again. Good bouncy bounces. One of the queens does go down. He's going to respread that creep. As long as Serral keeps spreading on every side during this, this drop pressure doesn't do that much. It's if you keep him a little bit panicky and distracted and Serral forgets to spread this creep, that's where it becomes problematic. And you can see he did spread at the bottom, forgot at the top. He's going to go for a five bane link speed bane run by on this base, but the tank is well positioned and there's a wall off, unlikely to get more than five or six SCVs at most. Second factory and armory going down for Mr. Clem. He's going to be going into Widow Mines already. So two safety tanks into Widow Mines. This is one of his most standard ways of playing. Got to drop on the north to clear creep. Open that up. Drop here. Looking to clear creep as well. Uh, looks like he doesn't have a scan saved. <laughs> That's the, that. Uh, shout out! A shout out in the comments of the chat if you guys have done that one as a Terran player. You stim your guys in and you're like, you try to scan and it doesn't work and you're like, ah, okay, we'll come back in 30 seconds when I have energy to clear that creep. 
Fem loses the Reaper finally. But he cancels the fifth. Forces Cero to rebuild that one. And he's back to actually clear the creep there. There we go. Cero hasn't respread creep that quickly. Clem stands and fights for a little bit. Okay, so Cero's gonna respread down here. At least two or three of those tumors do get down. Ling Bane jumping on top of that bio. Those queens could get some damage here. Clem going a little bit YOLO. Says you only live once, you only die once. Let's drop into an enemy mineral line already. No creep respread on the north for Cero. Cero's at 79 workers. Clem is at 68. So Clem is a little behind in that regard, but his upgrades are already started plus two. Oh my god, Clem! Oh, a rare mishap for Clem. Does lose a whole bunch of marines there. Only saves a few of them. Widowmine went down as well. Units lost tab is looking pretty decent for Clem in that it's close to two to one units lost, but no big fights. It's just been very small skirmishes so far. And Cyril being up on 82 workers, I think, is where he wants to be in this game. Oh, the whole position into, into pulling the exact Zergling away that's being targeted. Cyril, Clem, so good at that minigame. Rainer as well. Clem was not able to retarget the Widowmine in time. Infestation pit goes down behind this. 2-2 starts up not too far behind the plus two attack of Clem. So Cyril's only slightly behind on that. Banelings may have morphed here, but there's a sensor tower, so he pulls them back for now. We don't mind there. Marines rotating around, looking for another denial on the fifth. The Lings and Banes are close enough. That ain't going to work. And very well played here by Cyril. Now, this base is always a, a, the point of contention in this matchup, right? Oh, Clem, what are we doing, buddy? Oh, my God. Okay. He's all right. He loses the Widow Mine, but the Marines get saved. He's going to drop there. He's just going YOLO. Yeah, this, this piece of terrain is very annoying for the Zerg to attack around. Clem focuses down a few Banelings, picks up, pulls away. He's dropping up there at the same time. The Ling Bane comes in. He focuses one down before picking up. Clem is feeling himself right now. He says, I got a fourth bind this. I got a fifth base going up. I'm making upgrades. I'm making eight barracks. I am large. I'm in charge. Cheryl says, you think you're large? You ain't in charge, mate. I don't listen to you. You're not the boss of me now. But the Queens come forward. Clem indeed is the force to run away. Cyril can back up those fighting words. Ling Bane there. The bio mine will not stop. Clem starting to just shove it in. This could backfire on Clem if Cyril can really just slow down and shut this down. He's spreading his lings as best he can. The Widow Mine's getting decent hits. Nothing game ending. But Marine's main position. Uh oh, maintaining position's a problem for Cyril. Loses a couple workers, but he's still up at 84. A solid economy. An accidental swarm most in the production tab. We call that uh, Gary, uh, no, not Gary. We've got to give him a better name. Nigel, the reject swarmost. He was never intended. He's an accident, but he sometimes actually has a decent impact. Uh, widow mines do get cleaned up on the front. Drop in the back of those widow mines. Looks like it was perfectly cleaned up by several. The drop here moving back and forwards. Clem's trying to shove it in every single opening, every single avenue, but I don't think he's getting the damage he needs. Like he's, he's, he's doing okay. He's definitely trading very well. But this is not killing Cyril, and this means Clem needs to have a late game. The question is, can Clem truly compete with Cyril in late game? I, I don't know. I, I definitely don't think he's anywhere near as good as like a Maru. Comes in, focuses a Marine or two, saves most of those. We really need to get a Spore Crawler over here. Looks like that Widow Mine comes back in in the main. Oh, Cyril does lose three drones. Links come back. There is no detection. It's going to be hard for him to clean that up. Clem will not stop. He just keeps going, 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 microing his way towards victory through cost efficiency. He's got mass command center behind it, so Clem is actually setting up for the long game. Those Widow Mines awfully clumped up. Cyril needs to take advantage of this. He gets most of them. Still three or four left. The bio is spreading. The Liberator's coming in. Clem using his momentum to set up dangerous bushes on the front. Oh no, there's no Banelings. The Marines hammering the south. The north is getting in trouble as well. Cyril feels he has to force the fight. The Widow Mines fire all over the place. The Ling Bane gets rid of most of that army. The Queens will clean up the Liberators on the south side. It looks like the Banelings barely morphed in time. Cyril defends the north and the south at the same time. And you know what? The units lost tab only 4,000 in favor of Clem. It looks like that fight actually worked out okay. Cyril misplaced a hatchery in panic on the bottom of the map, quickly cancels it and replaces it to make sure it's perfect. Cyril still having attention to detail in the chaos. It's a, his ability to not get too frazzled, to get more focused in the chaos that makes Cyril a god of the game. Big Widow Mine hit onto those Zerglings. Even though it damaged the Medivacs a lot, it did kill a lot of Zerglings. Lurkers are borrowing there, and Cyril's saying, you did not get rid of this base. I've still got control over my five base setup. Get wrecked, Terran player. We're in the late game now, and now I actually have that Hive tech. I've got those tools. You no longer have this massive advantage over me positionally. My Lurkers can always siege you out of any position. I've got Vipers to deal with tanks. Yeah, you got Ghosts on the way, but Ghosts are vulnerable to Ling Bane swarming over the top. Ooh, okay. Bio Ghost coming on forward. Queens, Lurkers, Ling Bane, Hydra trying to hang out. 
Lingbane, Hydra Lurker, thinking about coming around. You don't want to attack around this corner, though. You want to move your army down here as Zeril before attacking through these smoke. What a mind drop comes in. Queens deal with it. Only three drones. That's acceptable, guys. He's keeping his economy high enough. These little drone losses don't matter. That matters. That is very annoying. The Viper is going to come down here for revenge. Actually, wait. He survived. Oh, I didn't even realize. The hatchery survived. Well done. Cyril did force a hot pickup. Kept that hatchery alive. The Vipers are now out, guys. They've got full energy. He's got a single infester. Where is Nigel? Nigel is in the bottom of the map. Cyril realized he built Nigel and he says, you should have a purpose. I'm going to throw some locusts and then just bloody send you in with him, mate. This is what we call Nigel the Scouting Swarm Host. Nigel! Well, he saw that his opponent's building bio medevac ghost tank, guys. That, what a revelation. Wait, are these guys on hold fire? Are these guys on hold fire? Oh, it's a mass lurker drop. It's a mass lurker drop. Clem, did Clem see it? I don't think Clem saw it. He might have just barely seen it. He scans. He sees the drop going towards his main. He doesn't realize it's a mass lurker drop. Unlike a Nidus that can get shut down, you can't really shut down a drop uh, just by popping the one Nidus. There is a tank and a bunch of turrets, though. This could backfire her heavily on Serral, or he could break the position and do very well. Sniping down the Overlords, Clem says the best defense is to attack. Attack is my answer to everything. My name's Clem. What are you even talking about, idiots? It's all I ever do. Attack! He's going in. Lurk is going down. Lings as well. Lurk is burrowing inside that main base. The tank gets one shot. He's going to try and pick up and go home, but he didn't seem to have seen the drop, even though he spotted it with the scan. His screen clearly didn't pick up on that. There was too much else going on at the same time. Lurkers are going to run around this base and see what they can do. Clear out some of this infrastructure. Maybe take out a punch of the bio. Some big spine waves going forwards and ripping apart a pack of that bio, but overall pretty good micro on the part of Clem to clean up this big Lurker drop. But oh god, he swarms the front at the same time! Massling Bane Lurker goes in, he gets 24 SCVs! Gets all the depots as well, remember we talked about in the Alaza series, Getting those depots is also massive the longer this game goes. If you can clear a bunch of command centers, you'll get supply blocked. The Ling is still burrowing to block that, but there's no units to actually kill that. That burrowed lurker does go down on the high ground. Clem, he's still got Widow Mines at the front, and they are still killing units. There are five queens left. There are Widow Mines all over the Zerg base. Oh, that one just got a big juicy off, and there's still two Widow Mines killing Hydras on the left side. Serral's in a bit of disarray. Uncharacteristic for Serral to be losing this many units to Widow Mines in his base. He did some big economic damage, but it doesn't matter. S Clem rebuilt so quickly. Clem's got building armor, plus three armor coming in. Uh, and it feels like Clem is just so far ahead of the curve with his mass orbital. He has seven orbitals. The Iron Bank has been completed. And if you have the backing of the Iron Bank of- Oh! Balrood Fungal Ambush! Parasitic Bomb on top of it! Oh my lord, where did that come from? Serral showing his trademark move, the Burrowed Infester, Infester Fungal Ambush. The Burrowed Fungaloo. Oh my lord. Clem still holds. Clem still holds. He also had a Liberator in the bottom that went in. The Queens dealt with that at the same time. But man, I can't believe how well Clem is holding. Serral, he's got to get more of these Infestors out. He never built Pathogen Glands, but he's going to make three Infestors. He's going to burrow them across the map and keep looking for those Fungals. Serral is really trying to do some cool... He's even got Burrowed Banelings as well. They're a little far north. They should be slightly further down because units are always going to be attacking from down here around the corner. Drop does pick up. It's going to move behind that base or into the main base. Vipers are there, ready. Single parasitic bomb will shut that bad boy down. Serral's creep control is lacking. Clem, on the other hand, has three circles. For those who don't know, guys, Clem is going for the late game Olympic win condition. You might be thinking, I didn't know the Olympics was a, uh, you know, StarCraft was an Olympic sport. It is, guys. And uh, if you build the Olympic logo on the map out of sensor towers, they give you a free gold medal. That's how that's how it works if you guys sign up for the Olympics. So if you're pretty good at building sensor towers, go for it. So far, he's got three of five. We'll see if he can get five of five. Bio Ghost moving forward at the time right now. He's going to siege that, that low ground. That mineral's always getting denied for Serral. He's on 87 drones versus 78 right now. We've got a Liberator coming in from the top. Serral's doing a good job of hanging on and you know he was quite far behind in money and supply for a while but he's up at 87 workers. He's starting to bank. He's maintaining a six to seven base uh, kind of map control. Getting some lings ready for a run by. There's nothing there. I think forcing, look at, notice how Clem's whole army moved on the entire map. So Clem is prone to F2 a lot more than Maru and some of these other late game gods. It's something I point out a lot is he'll grab his whole army and you'll see it shift to deal with a backstab. He's not, he doesn't like leaving a lot of units on defense because it weakens his offense. That can cost him sometimes. So I would love to see Serral keep poking, but you see he's actually split his army now. He's realized, okay, okay, these backstabs can be annoying. He's just poking with a squad down here on the south. Meanwhile, oh my lord, incessant liberator harassment. Guys, I thought Vindicta was just being mean to old men whenever he queued liberators into my base constantly in late game ZVT. I was like, you're just abusing me because I'm a slow old caster. 
But you know what? Liberators are 25 gas cheaper now in the last patch. Spirit showed at Katowice, even versus top tier opposition. You keep mixing Liberators in, it just, it adds pressure and stress to your opponent. It's much harder for them to deal with than it is for you to execute. If you just keep queuing these Liberators in, there is massive damage potential and huge disruption for your opponent. It really keeps them unsettled in terms of their focus. Oh, watch out, Fungal! Big Fungal boy! He pokes his head up and he drops it out. EMP does take out all the Viper energy though. One of those Vipers does get popped. And he's got more Infestors behind it. He throws a Zoning Fungal to try and protect his boy, but it goes down anyway. Clem is hot on the Warpath. Takes out two of those Infestors. Third and fourth do get away. Lurker harassing in the bottom, doing pretty well. Serral is going to lose this top base that's building. Not the biggest deal. Doesn't cancel it, though. So a little expensive. And check it out, guys. Earlier, he went for the drop. Now it's the Nidus one. Let's go to Clem's vision. Clem's not watching. Clem's microing up here. He doesn't know about the Nidus. I think there's lurkers in that. I believe there's lurkers inside the Nidus worm, guys. I, I don't think it's that many, but oh god, oh god. He realizes, but it's about to pop. He's got a few Marines and Ghosts. He changes his rally. There's nothing inside. Okay, there, there is. Four lurkers do pop out. It is just those four lurkers. Oh, he sniped the Overseer, which means there's no detection here. Let's go back to everyone's camera. Uh, he could pop out more units right now. A lot of Zerglings ready to pop out. Does he decide to shove them in? No, nope, he just uses the lurkers for harassment. Serral says, I'm not over committing to any of these moves. I am forcing you to have problems to deal with. And while you get flustered, my Infestors find the money shots. Mass Lingbane Hydra coming forward on the top. He's going to deny this base. He says, Clem, you do not get to get any of the middle bases. Those are mine. Get out of here, you silly boy. Takes out a few of those Ghosts, a few of those Widowmines. Doesn't chase too far. That was a perfect fight for Serral. Very well executed. Clem has cleaned up the Nidus Worm in the main base at the same time. He's repairing his command centers. A few of his depots burned down, but he's got so many command centers that it looks like he's not getting supply blocked anytime soon. That command center will fall in the north. He tries to re-land the Hydra's take it out. Baneling's chasing this army down. It's mostly just a handful of Marines and Ghosts and Marauders and Ghosts. It's not that big, and there's a new Nidus behind it. So by distracting him here, it's actually pretty effective. Infester does get jumped on double EMP plus double scan to take out that Burrowed Infester, but round 16, and Nidus in the main, he says, from beneath you we devour. The Lings are going to come in there, a couple Lurkers behind it. The Widow Mines do go off on a few of those, just getting a couple of SCVs for now. Doesn't quite get the Ghosts, but the Lurkers could be a nuisance. Uh, Serral is once again going to say, okay, just burrow out of those scans. Try to be as annoying as possible, force as many scans, force as much distraction. And while you're distracted, you know what? I kill a few units, I make you stim, and I jump on the front. Where is that? Is it Parasitic Bomb or Abduct? I think Abduct's the best way. Abduct pulls Liberators out of Siege Mode, for those who doesn't know. Those who don't know. Those who doesn't know? Jesus, man, my la English skills are really just top tier, guys. Uh, what can I say, though? Casting Serral and Clem is about 10,000 hours, uh, uh, you know, 10,000 miles a minute, so... I think I can forgive myself for uh, slipping over a little bit in the intensity of watching these two beasts of the game battle it out, man. Eight SCVs go down. The command center goes up in the top side. Uh, how many orbitals have we got right now, guys? It looks like three planetaries. Nine orbitals. His iron bank is getting bigger and bigger. Now, there's infestors everywhere, and he kind of knows this. He catches that infestor. He catches that. Oh, guys. Clem got himself. He's one of those people at the beach with a metal detector. He's the old man looking for coins, except in this case, He's got an infested detector, and he's getting big, juicy slugs that he's digging out of the sand to cook for dinner later. Uh, does take out a few of those infestors, removes the big kind of potential win condition of Serral, which is you clump your army for a moment, I pop out of the ground and fungal you. And Clem is doing a fantastic spread. He's taking this base. He is repairing it to try to get it out of burning territory. Now, a lot of Terrans would sit there and defend for a second here. Clem says, F that, I'm attacking. Ling's coming in. There's two Widow Mines to defend, but Serral with the perfect split of two Zerglings to take those shots. And the rally will deal with it. So not a bad harassment. Very cheap investment for Serral, but doesn't find any big crazy damage. Oh, 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 oh that widow mine, the slayer of Zerg dreams. A fungal does come in from behind. He tries to unborrow another one, doesn't get a second one. The parasitic bomb fungal was insane. That was a sick combo by Serral, but he took a giant widow mine and was attacking around a corner at the same time. Serral both pulled off some of the most beautiful spellcaster ambush action while walking into the meat grinder. One hand was bloody destroying Clem, backhanding him. The other hand was unfortunately inserting itself willfully into Clem's meat grinder. That is not what you want to be doing as Serral. So if Serral, you know, was able to not take the big Widowman hits, it might have been okay. Speaking of big Widowman hits, another one goes down. Serral does lose this bottom right base, trying to take bases on Clem's side of the map. Unburrow Fungal, immediate focus fire for Clem to punish that. 
Dude, Clem is so quick. How many investors have we lost this game? Nine investors have gone down. Cyril keeps them building. At this point, it's worth getting pathogen glands. You're constantly building investors and borrowing them everywhere, but he's constantly scared of you killing them. We've got another burrow boy there just trying to deal with this and see what he can handle, man. Oh, man. Liberator's coming forward. Bioghost doing what they can. The Viper's here as well. Lean Bane, Hydra trying to roll in. Abducts on the Liberators will be big. There's not that many Hydras, so they need the Abducts to deal with it. But that is a ton of Ling Bane. A few of the Liberators are actually going to escape. There are only three Hydras to capitalize, so he wasn't able to kill that many. Um, the Liberator production's been wild. 20 Liberators this game. Remember, Liberators only cost 125 gas. One of those little shadow buffs we, uh, we people forgot about. People didn't talk about. 25 gas with a Liberator. What's that even mean? Clem says, it means my Concord cannons are going to take you to D-Town, Zerg boy. And he is indeed doing very well. The Ling Bane gets a pretty good angle on the front ghost. But a chasing around the corner into those libs is just a big old problem. Uh, Marines and Marauders, Ghosts, Libs, doing everything. Lurker around to the north gets two SCVs. Scan, Liberators, bam, take it out. Cyril's out of bank, he's dead. There's just nothing he can do right now. Clem has too much of the map and he has for too long. Units Lost Tub is actually so good for a Zerg vs. Terran late game. Can you believe it, guys? He's only down 12,000. I know, I know it sounds like I'm joking. I'm not. That is actually really good Units Lost. Cyril has been fighting like a beast. But Clem has just had too much of the map for too long. Fighting like a beast and trading decently is not good enough. You need to actually be more efficient than the Terran in this sort of game. And, uh, and that's basically an impossibility unless you are so much better than your opponent. So I actually feel like Cyril's taking fantastic fights, and you could you could argue outplaying him since he's being quite efficient. But at, uh, at the end of it, it doesn't matter because Clem's like, well, yeah, you can you can be a bit better than me in some fights. I am gonna have ten times more of the map than than you. You know, if I'm sucking up the resources on the whole map and just doing more than you, it doesn't matter. Okay, you denied a command center. That's fine. I'm lib harassing you endlessly. I'm just gonna reland a command center at that base, float over one of my fifteen replacement command centers. And, uh, and suck up more and more resources. And the fact is, you're not going to get to mine off these middle bases, which means you're going to mine less resources than the Terran, who is naturally more efficient than you already. Liberator's going to come forward. A scan is going to ruin Cyril's day there. He's fighting on the bottom side. Big Fungal comes in from behind. He actually kills a lot of ghosts there. Dude, the parasitic bombs on the Metavax. Quick spready for Cyril. Another parasitic bomb. Another Fungal. He's trying to kill the Metavax. He actually took out like four or five Metavax there. That was kind of slick, man. Cyril is so good at chasing, but oof, scan on the top, as I said, is going to ruin Cyril's day whenever that goes down. The Lurkers try to pull out, but uh, man, you need to have better than just a pull-out game. Dude, you need some Terranicide 4000. Spray that down there. You need the, the, the thickest defense of all time because he's always going to be getting through. Clem wriggles his way to a 2-0 advantage off the back of beautiful microaggression. And saying, I'm not going to play Hellions versus Cyril. No, no Hellions for me today. It does make me wonder, can Cyril Ling Bane bust him? Oh, right, all right, all right. This man is on fire right now. I mean, uh, young Clem struggled in the start of his series versus uh, a laser. But my lord, he's coming out of the gates roaring. Clem is looking like a monster right now. 2-0 up. Representing Team Liquid up against, of course, Basilisk's Cyril. Cyril has been on fire recently. He destroyed Clem 3-0 in the Basilisk uh, 25th anniversary kind of finals, getting revenge for what, of course, uh, Clem did to him back in, um, back in, what do you call it? Back in uh, Pigsty Festival, which is the uh, the only series that Cyril had dropped after um, after Katowice. That lost to Ragnarok. I feel motivated him more than ever, you know? A lot of people saying he was done. Oh, never seen him break like this mentally before. He's done. He's, he's dusted. And that's what happens, you know? When people have so much hope on you because you've built such a legacy for yourself, people expect you to be so untouchable. A single loss here or there, and people are like, oh my god, he's, he's, you know, he's done for. But I think unlike a lot of uh, things out there, people people think... Uh, I think they sometimes think of StarCraft kind of like fighting or something, where it's like a boxer gets knocked out, and it's like, oh my god, this is going to change the trajectory of his career. So it's like... He might never be the same. It's like the thousands of games these pro gamers play in tournaments against top level opposition, the, the consistency of it, three different matchups, different maps, so many different options in the game. Inevitably, you will you will lose things, right? You, you will lose things. You will, uh, you will very quickly uh, try to, uh, you know, 
uh, adapt. Players will all have a target on your back if you're the world number one. They'll figure out ways to catch you off guard here and there. But it's all about the big picture, the consistency over the long term. And that is something Serral has always shown. But, man, down 0-2 versus Clem. It feels kind of tough. He's uh, just done a normal 16 hatch reopening again. I really think that 15 hatch put him in a great position earlier today. But we'll see how he goes. He does build a 28 third hatch. This is a standard clash opening. The very quick 28 third base. And delay link speed by time with the Zerglings. And Clem is going to make him pay. No, perfect Ling Micro, man. Not a single kill. All four Lings hiding in the back of the base, kind of cowering, going, oh, protect us, mom. And uh, she did indeed protect them well. Two queens coming to the front, going to allow that creep to get down. Careful. That Reaper wants a Zergling kill. Yes, he does. Oh, my lord. He goes so deep. You have to be so conservative with your creep tumor versus this savage. It's so funny. I like hit their reaper twice and just put it at the edge of creep and get away with it like 9 out of 10 games at my level. Against Clem's reaper, you, you like can't put the creep tumor down until you've taken so many safety assurances. Oh, 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 Reaper's still looking for it. He's like, give me a juicy creep tumor. Come on. Come on. I feel like Clem is like, his Reaper is like, has anyone ever had um someone who's like addicted to like picking scabs or something? I feel like creep tumors to him is like someone who's got like a, a scab or like a, a little, or maybe they've got like, a, maybe they've got sunburn. They've got like some skin, a little bit of skin peel. And it's just like, it just can't resist picking at it. <laughs> kind of a gross analogy, but I feel like the way his Reaper is just always there, like doing that little shuffle, trying to go, oh, let me at it, let me at it, you know, let, let me go. And you're like, oh my God, chill, my man, chill, chill, Winston. Forces the drones back. Sarah with a good reaction there, doesn't take any damage. And he's actually going to go for the Overlord Sacrifice. Very rare for him to do that. Is that a Cloakless Banshee, my friends? It is. The lack of cloak might make Cyril think this is actually a battle cruiser, which is interesting. Hmm. But it's just a single cloakless banshee. Are we playing mech? I think he was maybe considering playing mech, but he decides to swap the starboard off. He's now just going to build a few barracks on those reactors, swap into standard bioplay. Hellions are still darting around the front. The single Banshee will come in, see if he can find some damage. A lair is on the way at 445. Not a bad timing there for Sarah Little. Goes out to the left side, luckily gets that hatchery down before the Banshee has a chance to snipe it. And already those queens push that Banshee away, so she can't get in this dead space behind the natural. That is a total of eight Hellions out with two more on the... Wait, ten Hellions? Guys, what is Clem doing? What is this build? Ten Hellions? Is he gonna... He's gonna do a two-pronged dive. I think he's gonna dive in or something. He's building more. He's going to 12 Hellions. What is this? I've never seen this before. I don't know what it is. I've never seen someone go so many Hellions. He, he definitely can't beat Queens, even with 10 Hellions. I don't think you can ever fight Queens as long as they have transfusers out, right? Uh, where's the Banshee at? Banshee's going up in the top left. It's hiding. I, I've never, what, that's crazy. 12? 12 Hellions? I mean, I said he doesn't like building aliens versus Serral. Apparently he's decided, let's build 12. That is such an immense amount of minerals. That massively slows down your extra barracks, your upgrades, all these other things coming down. So these aliens need to get some work done. Otherwise, Serral is gonna is gonna explode. He's just gonna dive? But Serral has 20 Zerglings. He's making some banes. Oh, oh, Serral really respecting that number of aliens. He realizes 20 Zerglings can't beat 12 aliens. So he's pulling back up his ramp. Oh, the queen is perfectly positioned. This is beautiful. Oh, but the Reaper Grenade! The Reaper Grenade bounces it! Clem gets up the ramp, but he's lost most of the aliens. Most of them are gone. Can Serral get rid of this? Oh, sorry guys, bad observing for me. I'm getting so excited. Oh, he's gonna lose them all. He gets, he transfuses the drones. Serral doesn't lose a single drone. He just transfused, transfused two or three drones that were about to go down. Serral with the goated defense. A lot of players would have just A moved their Zerglings to try and block the aliens here. He realized it was so many aliens. It was such a crazy move. And he instantly knew. This is like a one in a hundred games at most you encounter this. But Serral immediately had the pattern recognition to realize what it was. Pulled up the ramp, blocked with the queen, got bounced out of the way, dealt with it, and even transfused drones at the bloody end. That was a shutdown. Not just a shutdown, but a smackdown. And now Serral is at 80 workers. Fifth base on the way. 
Mass Ling Bane, one one upgrades are only about 40 seconds behind, which is totally acceptable for Zerg vs. Terran. He is well in the lead, and Clem drops a fourth command center in a second factory. He's gearing up for a macro game, but he's gonna have to claw his way back into this one as Serral has a huge amount of control. It was a cool idea from Clem. I'm telling you, that's one of those ideas I go, what even is this? This seems silly. And then you see it come in and you're like, oh man, it's kind of at this point where Zerg is like, well, you're not really doing anything with your aliens. You're just poking around with 46 aliens. And then bam, you know, you come in with so many at such an odd timing. It's, it's a very different pressure. And I think that's a great thing to show in a big tournament like this. You're like, I, I've never done this before. I figured it out in practice. I hit it and I saved it for this moment to get the 3-0 versus Serral. And of course, Serral's like, yeah. I've never seen it either, but I just figured out what to do. He's like, I scrambled, I knew what to do. So quick on his feet, so quick to adapt to the situation. Very well played. I like this position for Clem. The tank, of course, could be better positioned in the corner. Can get flanked here. It's not a bad little pressure for him, but uh, he's definitely just got to be pretty chill about it. Now, I'm trying to do Baneling run buys is Serral every game, but every game there's both a tank and a sensor tower and a wall off, and Serral just kind of goes, ah, okay, well, not worth it. You could attack with a big Massaling Bane later, bust the wall and get in there, but right now it doesn't make a lot of sense. Fourth base is floating out. Now, Nacero made a mistake on uh, Data C, I believe, in, in one of last year's regionals, maybe the last season, where he actually got in a game like this where he was way ahead, and then he just went Hive Tech and went for all the upgrades, played a big macro game, and Clem just got, it, got back in the game. Like, Clem started just dropping everywhere and harassing him, and... Over time, Clem was able to micro his way back. Oh my god, Clem, Clem. Oh, the medevac's a bit far behind. Okay, a bit of a mistake for Clem. Clem tries to trap the Ling Bane. The Ling Bane says, you're trapped in here with me, idiot. And Ling's are killing some SMEs. And the Marines on the top get blown up. Oh my lord. Okay, Clem, he's going to lose the tank as well. Serral says, mate. Mate. You should have counted yourself lucky you didn't lose more SCVs. Trying to trap me there was a huge mistake. Way too cocky. Clem, of course, on the back foot needed to be a little bit more defensive and respectful, but Clem and defensive is an oxymoron. It does not work. Syntax error. I, uh, I actually built a simulator uh, of, uh, of, of Clem's brain, and I've been putting different build calculations into it, and I said, play defensive versus Zerg. And all it, all it shot out was syntax error on the little, the little printing paper that it prints out the responses on, so... Yeah, I, I tried a few different ways of putting it in. It just kept bugging out. Not really sure what the, the reasoning is. Baneling's getting gunned down. Clem. Ooh. Gets a few queens as well. Good micro, man. This is what I'm talking about. He can just micro his way out of these situations. Look at the units lost tab. He's, he's 2,000 resources ahead of the units lost tab. Uh, tanks. Marines. Widow mines. Moving down that north side. Double drop's going to move back to the right. Banelings are being massed as is Ling Bane Hydra Hive's pretty late this kind of feels like the Elaza style oh oh those Widow Mines are pretty good it's an I think it's not the worst trade for Serral because he's still killing all the units and he does have the big big 86 worker economy but the problem is of course now that there's a fourth base up I mean overall oh good bailing hit there Clem a little slow on some of these pickups you know this is what happens when he's on the defense remember Serral is overwhelming him Clem looks much better when he's attacking than when he's defending we've talked about how he has a much higher aggressive stat than defense aggression 98 to 100 percent defense 73 percent is is kind of what I would say for Clem the problem is how do you ever put him on the defensive when he's in your face all game and that's why you often have to pay a big price just to get across the map and push him onto the defense borrowed Bailing's down here for Serral and uh, a drop of Widow Mines coming down the south. This army's just going to run away. Serral's trying to scramble on top of it. Good spready with the Zerglings. Those two take one for the team. The Ling Bane Hydra is chasing after it. He's going to try and bust this base. There's nothing there. There's nothing to defend it. Widow Mine drop might do some boom boom. But can he defend the Poon Poon is the bigger problem. Mass Ling comes in on this side. It's going to clear that base. The Banelings, the Hydras, the Lings are going to blow that one up as well. He's going to be able to take that out. The Banelings are derping a little bit. Serral, of course, is very busy right now. But he clears that up. It looks like the army on the left does get defended. But Clem loses a base and 14 S. CV. Serral loses 11 drones. You might think that's a huge problem, but look at his production tab. He already rebuilt 11, a uh, 12 of the 11. So he goes up in drones within 20 seconds of losing them. And even though the Widow Mine dropping itself was good at losing the command center, it's tough. He has another command center, but that's his last spare command center. He's starting a new one. He needs to build more. If he loses any of these building command centers, he'll probably lose this game. Oh! Serral with the boom boom! Smacking it down. The bio walking. Oh no, Clem! Oh my lord! Oh my 
my lord. Clem turns around at the last second. He does not know there's Banelings there. He was just very distracted in the top, and he said, oh, I should probably walk back. Yeah, I don't want to walk down there right now. Oh my god, my god, my god, my god. it's not right. Centered. He scans, does kill the Banelings, but he was kind of standing on top of it, so he still takes a pretty big hit. I'm sorry for punching my microphone there, guys. I'm just so bloody excited that I'm gesturing wildly like a madman right now. Um... Vipers are on the way, Lurkadan, Carapace, Adrenal Glands all coming in. Serral pulling out some very slick moves to keep Clem contained on his side of the map and making it difficult. Now, whenever Clem moves around the map, he's got to be nervous. Like, even there, he's like, that's dangerous. They could have been Burrowed Banelings on that rope. Anytime he moves up a ramp, that's a very prime spot for Burrowed Banelings to be. And look at this. Serral comes in, Burrowed Banelings. That Clem doesn't know about it. Burrowed Zergling. Finally, he realizes that was being blocked this whole time. I thought he'd clear that up, but he hadn't. Oh, Clem goes in for the snipe. He picks up the Marines, leaves the Marauders out for an extra second, finishes the hatchery, and then gets out. Serral knocked back to four base versus four base. Well played by Clem there. These Burrowed Banelings are just waiting, though. They are just waiting. Burrowed in there saying, come on, baby, step on these landmines. Clem, so far, is doing a good job of getting back in. He's trying to take another command center here. Now, this is where things get interesting if he wants to take this base he has to focus on this base next and basically this is a defensive position and then try to push the north of the map as much as possible or vice versa right um he, he really can never take this base or the bottom right if he's playing this style uh big bio mind spread in the top left of the map coming on in the link bane trying to spread around gets us around on a few small sets of units which is not bad at all changelings will come forward clem not counter pushing in the right at all link bane hydra viper going to clear this out sarah's going to try and take the bottom right base Ling Bane Hydra on all sides. The upgrade's pretty even. Actually, Clem doesn't have his plus three attack just yet, so he's been kind of slow on those three, three upgrades. The Ling Bane comes through. Marauders happy to take some Banelings on the face. Not very efficient for those units to take that. Still, this Bio not going down that ramp. Those Borrowed Banelings not finding the mark. Plus three Carapace is done. Plus two range, plus two, uh, plus three melee are on the way for Serral. Plus three weapons about to finish for Clem. It's not there just yet. And the Banelings are going to get in. Parasitic bombs on the Medivacs. SCVs transferring in. They have to run away. The Planetary gets taken out by the Hydraling Bane. And most importantly, Serral doesn't even need to use that many Banelings at the same time. It looks like this army is going to attack the bottom right side. The Medivacs are far behind, though. He's going to have to do a bit of a spready. Does take out the base. Nice cancel for Serral to mitigate the damage. Units Lost Tab is only a few thousand resources behind for Serral. You guys know what that means. That means Serral is destroying this game. He is absolutely destroying this game. He's got Burrowed Banelings all over this bottom right side. He's got a Zergling that he could burrow on that top base as well. Clem is trying to get this Command Center back up. Remember, Command Center uh, count is low. Three Orbitals. He doesn't have the Iron Bank. He's only building his fourth Orbital now. Clem is not set up for a late game. Remember how overpowered he looked on Gresfin? That was Clem with seven orbitals, then nine orbitals. Endless mules. He had so much money invested in infrastructure. Serral, he's Zerg. He can't invest that money in infrastructure. Zerg doesn't have that capability, but they can swarm right here, right now, before the Terran gets there. And that's exactly what Serral's going to do. Hydras take out the Libs. Banelings take out the Planetary. Beautiful SCV spready. A whole bunch of boys do avoid the bailing splashies, but the planetary goes down, as does a lot of the army. Now, this is actually... Oh, focus fire, Clem, focus the banelings! But he still gets a bunch of banelings in the mineral line. The command center might survive, but, I mean, that was pretty slick. I love watching these top pros, because they're some of the few players who actually focus fire their planetaries on things. Uh, something you, you'd never see at the, the middle, lower levels of GM. Uh, Bayer trying to start a step backwards. Parasitic bombs wearing him down right now. Mass Zerglings in the Remax right. Here we go. The Widowmine counts much diminished. That Widowmine gets a boom, boom. 12 kills and a Hydra plus big splash damage on the other one. Serral realizes he stepped into a bad territory. That cliff turning into a danger zone. And he needs to get out of there right now. Uh, he may need to give up this base. He's low on units. On the other hand, Clem does get flanked. Link Bane from the right side. Widow Mines do get the only very small hits. EMP lands on the Vipers. Parasitic bombs take out one or two of the Medivacs. The Bio trying to get back. The Widow Mine is there as well. And, um, oof. Okay, Command Center's up there. So Clem is on five bases. Serral is on one, two, three, four, five, six bases, including this one. Uh, Serral needs to make sure he's moving his workers around. Yeah, you can see his bases are a little oversaturated with all the action that's happened. He actually needs to expand to new hatchery. Serral's fighting very well. Units lost tab looking great for him, but he's not actually securing new bases. And look at this, he tries to secure one. Oh, and Clem is going to go... Goodbye. 
No hatchery for you, mate. New hatchery goes up in the bottom right. Liberators are trying to harass. Looks like it accidentally got F2'd back to the army, though. Bio trying to split up right now. Check this out. Clem has split his army. Here we go. Oh, that Widow Mine gets a few Zerglings. Oh, nice surround on the Zerglings, though. Bainlink's coming in from behind. Looks like he can't chase this. Just going to take out the Liberator and back off Will Serral. Now, I think we're going to see Infestors in that production tab very soon, guys. And he's just... Oh, he's actually got Lurkers. So six Lurkers have hit the field. There's not that much of an answer to it. Only six Ghosts. I mean, these Lurkers are a very real problem. Banelings in the mineral line. SCV's trying to run away. Clem trying to deal with this. The Banelings just click the planetary. He says, just take the planetary. And that's the most important thing. I know Clem will clean up this army. But I killed the base. That's important for Serral, even though the fight was very good for Clem in terms of army versus army. He's going to try to counter thrust. I thought Serral would blow that base up as well. But Serral falling back on his deep base instincts, which are defensive in nature. Clem, when he's under pressure, he attacks. When he panics and goes into that kind of default, just habitual mode, attack, attack, attack. Serral, it's defense. And if he'd sent Lings in there, that base was completely wide open. Despite that, it doesn't matter. Serral's taking smashingly good fights. He's burrowing the bases. The parasitic bombs take out some medevacs, forcing ghosts to unload. They get taken out. Well, they were almost taken out by Zerglings. They do end up surviving. And Serral transferring to fully saturate this fifth base in the bottom left. Check out that income tab. Serral, as those drones transfer, he's going to be back above 3,000 minerals a minute versus a currently 1,500 mineral a minute. Clem, double the mineral income is a huge problem. As Pathogen Gland enters the production tab, the final uh, range upgrade coming in to round out 333 for Serral. And you know what? Plus three armor never got made for Clem. He's been broke all game long. He's still only at four orbitals, trying to take crazy efficient fights hang on, but he just doesn't have all of that extra infrastructure and defense that he needs. Ling's on the right, cleansing that mineral line before the planetary's up. Oh no, Clem losing 17 more workers. The Hydras are going to get on top. Oh, and he even abducts a few of those medevacs that were trying to pick up those units. Clem is going to tap out his two new bases. We're getting ransacked by Lings and Serral. He may have been down, but he is no... He, he's not going to be out. 3-0. Bloody really nice comeback. And once again, beautiful defense of that Hellion run by. All right, guys. Going into game four. And ooh, my. We're getting the 15-15 going again. Extract a trick. Serral's going to be playing a bit of a special opening. I'm excited, man. I really was sad he didn't try it again after game one. Game one was all about the roach repositioning, man. That, that, that was the whole problem. The whole problem was the roach positioning. And I really feel he can get ahead off this opening. It's such a good opening. He's going to do it on Babel on a very small map. And it does play very well into roaches this opening. I think that's it's actually its best at playing into roaches. Because it, it does struggle with lava a bit from the third and fourth base stage. But roaches don't really care about that. Whereas Ling Bane struggles at that stage. So... We'll see how we go. Clem with the barracks and the gas going down. And uh, he's setting... He was looking over at the enemy natural. That was funny. Is, did, wait, 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 guys. Does he have a... Clem has a camera location in Serral's natural. Y did you see? Look, he, yeah, you see? You can see his camera keeps looking at Serral's natural. What the hell? Let's go to Clem's camera. Watch this. He does a little cycle where he flips between his camera locations. And I think one of them is in Serral's base. That's so weird. Map hacker, man. But now he's not doing it at all. I swear he was doing it earlier. Oh, yeah, see there. And he just said his rally. Okay, it's the rally point for the barracks. Ah, it's the rally point for the barracks. He keeps he keeps right-clicking his barracks uh, rally point out. I see what's happening. No SCV scout for Clem, guys. That means these two Zerglings from the natural could deny his nat- Wait, wait, wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. Eight Zerglings? Eight! Oh my god, Serral saved all his lava up! He's not just doing the two Zerglings, he's going eight Zerglings. Oh man, because he didn't see an SCV scout. This might even be reactive because he didn't see an SCV scout. Um, that Reaper is going to come over. These Lings are going to slip out of this base and they're going to look for the cancel on the command center. He's going Reaper Reactor as well! So he doesn't even have a Marine. Oh, the Reaper's going to come in! And you know what? Clem might not have played against this build. He might not even realize that this creep is early. He should realize when the queen comes out that he immediately needs to go home. He needs to go home right now. Here we go. He sees it. Okay, he sees the queen. That queen is way too early. Clem should immediately go home. Does he do it? Yeah, I think he realizes. Okay, I think he knows. I think he knows what this means. He's like, how is that queen 10 seconds early? That means your pool's 10 seconds early, which means, oh my god. There could be lings on my side of the map. And he's going super quick. 
Third command center before factory? What is this build? Oh my God, Clem was playing a really greedy three command center into three it's a CC build. Now, okay, he won't lose the command center, but look at how many SCVs he has to pull to save it. Eight Zerglings gonna fight these SCVs. He's splitting them up a little bit is Serral. Just all this mining time being lost is already a disaster. And Serral is full gasless, droning like a madman behind it. Oh, good micro by Clem. He only loses two SCVs. That could have been a lot worse. He gets the Marines and the Reaper out. Still a lot of mining time. And look at this gasless third hatchery, which makes perfect sense. He doesn't even have a factory. You don't you don't need any mobility here. He's playing three commands. And a, yeah, you better get your third started. Now, I don't know how far ahead Serral is, but it does feel like it's a, a good momentum position, right? Because these queens can just push back the Reaper. He jumps on the high ground. Queen's going to push him back. And uh, Clem's going to see no third base there. He doesn't really have a lot of context on what's going on in this game, right? He sees no gas there. There is a third uh, double gas going up for Serral right now. And what a cool opening for Sarah. I love that he's mixing this 15-15 in. I really think it's just such a fantastic way to mix up the opening, man. Now, couldn't the uh, Reaper have defended the command center on its own? Eight Zerglings does a crazy amount of damage. So uh, they could just ignore the Reaper. It would take a long time to kill them all. You could argue Clem overpulled SCVs a little bit, but you don't want to be letting that command center get too low if you risk losing it. When it's not finished building, buildings have no armor. Whereas the standard is most buildings have one armor once they're finished, which is a pretty significant damage reduction on Zerglings. But while they're building, they disappear real quick. Eight Zerglings do 40 damage around eight times five, but they also attack incredibly fast, which is the real the real kicker. So it's uh, twice a second. So it's 80 damage a second, 10 seconds, 800 damage. It's probably would have taken about 12 seconds of those lanes attacking the command center for it to go down. It's a, it's a, it's a ton. It's, it's not that much time, and a Reaper is going to take a long time to kill eight Zerglings. That Overlord does go down. Serral's got Link Speed and Double Evo Chamber on the way. It looks like Serral is thinking about playing Zerglings, guys. And he sees the Starport Factory timing. I think Serral needs a, a Macro Hatchery or a fourth base up in the near future. He's up 12 workers right now. Not the craziest lead, but very well timed time double upgrade. So he's trying to do Mass Queen Zergling. I think what Serral's going to do here is delay Banelings a lot and just have an abundance of queens and zerglings and basically say, I'm just going to surround you and then you're going to be forced to pick up and I'm going to chase the medevacs and not let you unload and really take the uh, the wind out of your pressure by just having a ridiculous zergling count. Now, obviously the danger of this is with no banelings, if you do get caught without it, you could be in a bad position. However, wait, wait, wait. I was talking to Cyril about the infester build. Oh, he's building the baneling nest. I thought he was going to skip in banelings and go pure ling into infester. He still might play infesters because remember, we were talking about the Cyril uh, infester build. We did a first person view cast of him trying it out on stream. And he said, yeah, I really screwed it up. I tried to rush infesters too fast. I realized that it's actually a good build going ling infester with no banelings, but I, I didn't want to show it on stream until I'd practiced it. I want to show it in a tournament. So I wonder if he'll do that here. We'll see. For now, Queen's pulling back. The double drop does come in. That queen does go down. Five, six queens are there. Ooh, okay. And the medevacs are going to pull back. And here we go. Trying to pull back a little bit more. Clem, he didn't get any massive damage. Just a queen or two is not, not the end of the world. Third command center is up. And his 1-1 upgrades start with a 70 second delay. Oh, about 65 seconds. About a, just over a minute. It's a pretty big delay on the upgrades. If Serral starts 2-2 straight away, I think he's looking pretty... Um, Baneling speed does start up. Sitting pretty would be the term. Looking pretty is what I said. It's all good. Uh, one, two, three. Is Serral only playing three gas, guys? Serral's on mass minerals right now. Only three gases. He's going to have a crazy amount of Zerglings. Another queen goes down. It's good to see Serral's rebuilding one of them. I think he needs to keep rebuilding these queens. He can't be letting that count get too low. With a massling Bane style, it's hard to deal with drops. But good pull on those queens. Damages the Metavax, pushes them back. His fourth base is already looking good. 68 drones. And he's massing Zerglings. Plus two melee starts. Carapace is the more important upgrade, which tells us that Serral just tapped both keys one after the other, not realizing necessarily that he didn't have the gas to start both. Otherwise, he would have canceled plus two melee and started Carapace. But he goes back, starts the Carapace anyway. So quick fingers, quick brain. Serral realizing what's up. He's going to set up a Bigling Bane backstab to hit the natural while defending on the right side, I believe. Those guys could go across the map, or he could flank. He could come around from behind. That could work too. Oh, he's massing units. He knew that Clem would be aggressive against this base. Serral has got a crazy big army of Zergling and Baneling, but I really want to see him move right out to the left and swing in from this angle. And maybe even go for the counterattack. He's going to go for the counterattack. 
Oh my lord, Serral is just gonna dive on that third base with mass Zerglings. He's like, hey, the tanks aren't that close. I can buy time here. I got a fifth coming up. The Lings are gonna run into that base. A lot of SCVs are gonna go down. Eight SCVs instantly fall. The Marines come over and distract. They draw the aggro, so the SCVs get saved a little bit. But no, they get left behind. Save them, Clem. He saves some of the SCVs. 12 SCVs go down. Fourth Command Center is gonna fall, though. Fourth Command Center goes down. The second factory and the depots are all in jeopardy right now. The Marine tank unable to break into that fourth base. Serral here by massing units off just 68 drones on three gases. He gave himself an abundance of minerals. And rather than teching up off that, he said, let's mass Zerglings and use it offensively. This is how you beat Clem, because Clem is such an aggressive player. Lings go after the tank, they get the surround, but the Marines kill a lot of Zerglings on that side at the same time. Clem gets a fantastic engage on the Zerglings, but he loses his tank position, and Serral keeps his fourth alive. His fifth comes up. I think he's happy with this position. Serral is looking really nice in this game, and he's continuing to build queens. So he's going to go back up to 10 queens massing lings and banes and building a bunch more drones he's gonna have so many zerglings in this game it doesn't matter how good your marine micro is if he can start flanking you with ling bane clem's gonna be in trouble clem also has very few units at home as long as serral keeps flanking and backstabbing i don't know if clem's gonna be able to handle it simply because clem is best on the offense he rarely sits back defensively as i say that he realizes how this style works clem with a great adjustment tanks ready on the defense shuts down serral's counterattack. serral only gets one siege tank and gets cleaned up really well played. Clem's showing a, a great amount of flexibility here, but where's this fourth command center, guys? Where's the follow-up? He's just massing bank, uh, bio tank right now, and he's down two upgrades plus two carapaces finishing. That's two two versus one one. Only now does the fourth command center get rebuilt. Clem, he is not set up for a super long game. He's going to need to take very good fights against a 78 drone zerg. Now you might think 78 drones isn't that many. Look at the mineral income and tell me it's not that many. He's only got three gases, which means he's taking a fourth gas now, actually. But still, only four gases on 78 drones means he has the majority of his workers mining minerals. And he has an absolutely insane income that you normally only see on a player that has 90 plus drones. The Lings going in for the surround on those tanks. So many Zerglings, man. Oh, no. Clem tried to move out. He thought the backstabs were done. Serral jamming it in like a psychopath. Who the hell is this? And what did you do with Serral? Is this life? This is, this, he's playing like an absolute aggro Chad, man. He is playing with very little caution that we expect from Serral. And I love it because that's how you play this style. This is how you dismantle Clem. This is what Dark does to him all the time. And Serral channeling his inner Dark, showing some flexibility and starting to kick ass. Well played. GG, well played. All right, all right, all right, guys. It's timed up two each. Clem in the top left of Neo Humanity and Serral in the bottom right. And oh me, oh my, he's at 15 supply again. 15 hash, 15 pool. Man, Serral is so awesome. So many players are just stuck in their ways, but Serral continues to constantly reinvent himself. And this is something that Flash had to do. And that's why he's known as the, the, the Emperor, the greatest StarCraft 1 player of all time is... He, he had a performance in Pro League for like a decade where he just was so good. And he constantly had players sniping him, trying to take him down. He always had to bring new builds, new styles that weren't what he was known for. It was always like he had such range as a player. And I feel like Serral has, has developed that, you know? He's really showing that he has got what it takes to, to be an aggressor, to be a crazy massling dark style player, to also still be that turtle late game guy when it's fitting. But right now... Ling backstabs are where it's at. <clears throat> you need to backstab Clem. You gotta catch him off guard. And uh, I think that Mass Ling Bane style especially has so much potential. Definitely one where he's gonna be wanting to go for uh, a different style there, man. He's gonna be wanting to go for Clem that is a Widow Mine or a Hellbat style. Very unlikely to go Hellbats, that's pretty rare. But probably Widow Mines, I would imagine. Now, there is a mind game you could play here as Serral. Where you're like, okay, you know... You know, I might, I'm, I'm kind of doing Mass Ling. You might change it up. Maybe I go for the Mass Roach this time again. So you can see only two Zerglings this time, guys. Clem is not scouting yet again. Oh, no, he is. There we go. Okay, he scouts. Now, he should know that that creep is a bit far out and that this is an earlier hatchery. But whether or not he knows that, we're not sure. Now, one Marine can defend with a bit of Micro. The two Lings don't do that much damage on their own. But it's all about how well Clem handles it in that intense moment. Awkward! Those lings are trying to leave, man. 
They're trying to sneak out, <clears throat> but they get spotted by the SCV. So the Reaper's going to chase after those. And uh, here we go, man. Ling hides off on that side. Four queen opening, which makes a lot of sense. If you're going to go gas, opening four queen is usually the way to do it with this 15-15 uh, build. Just get those extra queens out early. You're going to have great creep spread in the follow-up. And uh, going for the double inject super early allows you to saturate that natural very quickly. Notice he built his two overlords so early because otherwise you do run into a supply block. So he's making sure there's no supply block. And that's a single Zergling will poke in just for a bit of a scout. He's not hoping for crazy damage. And actually, it is going to be a Hellion build. Oh, third command center scouted just like that. A slow Zergling scout. A little lazy from Clem to let that through. Now Clem's coming back with an SCV and he's like, whoa, remember he got Nidus by Serral. He's got to have that in his mind. Like, oh god. Serral's going lair, second gas. He could be either Nidusing, Mutering. Technically, he could be playing Roaches, but this feels to me like something like that. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so the SCV sees the lair. Reaper kills a Creep Tumor. There's a Roach Horn and another gas on the way. Wouldn't it be sick if Serral plays the Roach Drop? Uh, the Queen Drop? With the, the, the Roach Pressure Queen Drop? That's actually a really good build off this. Um, and this is pretty close to that build order. If he takes, like, the third gas and an OV speed, OV speed, and third gas, third gas will go down next as well. Guys, he's actually doing it. He's doing the goddamn Queen Roach push. Oh, my lord. He's Eric, the Brazilian beast, is, is having his builds used by the goat. Eric, you legend out there. So he's normally with this build, you drop three queens and you bring five roaches for a pressure. And if they've got plenty of units to defend, you just basically start spreading creep everywhere. You back off and you're droning up your third and fourth. Yeah, he's doing it. Six roaches. Now, I wonder how much he commits. Because um, I remember when Eric first described the build to me, he said you only go for five roaches um, with it. But I I've also seen him go six, seven, eight roaches experimenting sometimes. Yeah, you can go nine roaches and commit really hard. And it can kill people who are opening too heavy in the Hellions. Luckily for Clem, he's only opened two Hellions, guys. He doesn't see the roaches coming out. They just left the base. Oh, that Reaper barely misses the scout. Okay, he's going to see it. He's going to see the roaches. So he sees a roach... Um, and sees another roach pop out. Okay, Clem, you need a bunker, mate. He's gonna build a bunker right now. That depot up front is exposed. What are we morphing here? Two droplets. What? Is he gonna drop everything in the main? Serral! 300 IQ. He just took Eric's build to the next level. He's gonna say, oh, you're gonna build bunkers. I'm gonna drop on your production, idiot. Oh, you think you can stop me? Look, he's gonna kill the depot and then... Or if there's like a tank, you can just pick up and drop on the tank if there's not much that shoots up, right? There is a lot of marines there, though. Oh, okay, Serral's droning and going to Evos. I think he's realizing, no, nah, no, nah, I can't get in there. That's too many marines. He didn't build enough Hellions for this to work. And he's going to start doing the queen drop creep spread. Sicko, 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 sicko. Bringing this build out when you're tied up two to two. Chat's pointing out that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's super freaking crazy. And look at that, the creep tumor gets down. Clem has to scan to deal with it. So he's hiding there. Drop a few creep tubers. He's going to keep doing this. Clem is like, God damn, what is this, man? Serral is bringing the NA builds to the EU region, man. People out there are like, oh, God, whoa, what's going on? But Serral, he's such a sicko. And he's going to go 1-1 one, one Roach. He's going up to uh, above 60 workers, so 66 workers. And I think this 1-1 one, one Roach timing is going to be devastating because, look, he can't even land his third. He's already had to scan there. Now he has to scan again. The queens are doing more creep tubers there and there. And I mean, Clem's doing a good job of cleaning it up, but uh, yeah, Serral can keep dropping these queens around and just putting these little creep outposts all over the map. This is so, so beautiful. And I like the way he pulled the queens home and he's being kind of conservative. I've made the mistake with this build. I've been practicing it a fair bit of trying to drop like here and they just move out and kill your overlord and your three queens and you're kind of in a bad spot then. But if you keep that around, you can just spread this creep so far. So the early lack of creep spread gets made up for very quickly. And you can spread one that way, one that way, or one forwards, one back. So, I mean, I want to see Serral spreading that creep for now. He's going Infestation Pit, Ling Speed, Burrow. He's not just going to do a 1-1 Roach timing, guys. I mean, it's still an option because he's got a lot of Roaches. But he's got that fourth base on the Rich Gas coming up. Clem's like, God damn it. <laughs> he's like, seriously? <laughs> spreading his Marines out to make sure it can't spread. Roach is coming out to defend this creep. He's like, this creep will spread. Serral dropping there as well. Dude, what a sicko. This is amazing. All right, we've got tanks on the way. We've got five barracks going up to six barracks in the main. That's interesting. Is, oh, no, no, eight barracks. Ooh, Clem's doing an A-Rax. Clem's going all in, guys. 
Clem is going all in on eight racks. Oh, but he misplaced his factory, so his tank was trapped back there because the eBay there. Oh, so he's letting his tanks out now. That's unfortunate. I think there's space for tanks to pop out there, so he should be okay on this one, but a little unfortunate on that. Hive Hydrogen. Serral's playing the kind of greedy follow-up, but he's not droning too crazy, so he's staying reasonably safe by having a lot of Roach Ravager out of the map at the same time. The Queens continue to spread their creep all over the map. He's going to do a Roach Drop in the main, and he's got the Queens dropping creep behind his natural. Oh, Serral, you sicko. Serral is playing such an annoying style to deal with. And look at this. He just cleaned up a few Marines. He's like, okay, you killed that, whatever. Meanwhile, Queen drop behind the natural base. Clem has got to feel like he's being trolled right now. He's got to feel like he's being trolled. In game five, Serral is doing this to you. You're like, what the hell is going on? Why are there... Did he just do a poo in my base? That queen just did a poo in my base. And then picked up and flew away. Serral doing some very cute arrests. He gets 11 SCVs, even leaves a single borrowed roach. He's like, I want you to waste a scan for a single unit. And that's so frustrating for Clem. Clem is now stuck on three bases. He's trying to do an eight racks all in, which by the way, has been scouted by Serral. Serral's making Vipers. He's trying to make Hydras so he can morph into Lurkers. He's already almost maxed on Roach Hydra. He has got one of the most like powerful defensive army comps in the game. There's rocks in the way that are going to slow Clem down. Clem's going to try to shove it. Clem feels like he needs to go aggressive to get back in this. He's too far behind in the macro game. He can't start a fourth command center now. But look at this. The Ling Roach backstab comes in. That's a lot of roaches, actually. Ooh, you don't want to lose them all. But he can trade okay on the Marines as long as the tanks don't get too many shots off. He's going to kill a few Marines. The Ling's actually doing all right on those SCVs as well. The Queen's drop back in in the natural. Oh, no transfuses. He's a little bit busy focusing on the front, of course. The Roachling goes down over there as well. Lurkers are morphed. Seismic Spines is on the way. Another 10 SCVs went down. He roach dropped the main as well. Oh, my God. And these roaches, he borrowed some of the roaches, kept them alive, and then unborrowed them. Oh my god, Serral looking like Dark today. Channeling the most annoying styles, throwing all these frustrating techniques out that are so difficult for Clem to deal with. Clem normally has very straight up matches against Serral, but look at that line of lurkers. It cannot be broken. Clem tries to breach the line and he cannot do it. Serral bringing out the 15-15 to come back from down 0-2 versus Clem to win three to two. What a beautiful, beautiful match between these two. And hats off to Serral for getting creative and copying builds from a heavily underrated Brazilian pro gamer, Eric. Uh, shout out to him for inspiring and creating that build in that last game. GG, well played, Serral, you absolute Chad gamer.